Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Integrative Movement Insider. Hope you're having a great week and it's off to a great start. This is an exciting week because this is the week of Idea World Virtual Conference this coming weekend, August 21st and 22nd. This is a great opportunity because many health and fitness professionals, I was just talking to a buddy of mine out on the West Coast and he's like, man, I'm struggling, you know, just getting up and being that positive role model for my clients, for my community. And I just feel like I'm just putting on a face and, and I'm sure if you're listening to this, I know I felt this way and you probably felt the same way that, you know, with all that's going on in our country and the world and COVID and, you know, we're worried about our businesses and maybe our business has been shut down and, you know, we've been on lockdown here for four months now and we're able to see clients. But again, it's very small, you know, or I should say very restricted business compared to what we were doing before. And, and you've likely been impacted that way as well. And yes, we've been doing a lot of virtual training. So, you know, our clients need us to be those leaders, to show up, to be that consistent voice, that positive voice, that empowering voice, because regardless of what side of the fence you are on, you know, as far as what's going on in the, in the world, you know, people are struggling, right? So this is a great opportunity for us to empower each other. And I said to my buddy, I'm like, hey, man, I, I, I feel you. I hear you. I know, I know exactly what you're going through. So you know, we can't change what's going on in the world, but we can change what's going on in our little world. So what I said to him is like, let's get together once a week, you and I, and just talk. We'll, we'll sit there and we'll complain about all the things we need to complain about, get it off our chest, get it out, and, you know, and sort of support each other that way. And also, I want to make sure that we come up with strategies that we're going to do and take control of those things that we can control. So thank you for doing what you do for your community, for being that positive role model for your community, for being that leader, for waking up every single day and going out there and leading your community because we really need leaders today more than we've ever needed them in the course of our life for sure. So to that point, this weekend, as I mentioned, is the Ideal World Fitness Virtual Conference. And during that conference, it's a great opportunity for you to be empowered as a health and fitness professional, to be educated empowered and to have your bucket filled. So I'm going to be discussing one of the things I've been sharing with you over the last few weeks, and, th and that's how you use a process like the integrative movement system, a systemic process, a strategic process to help you create powerful and lasting changes with your clients. For example, my client, Joel, 84 years of age, his balance has actually improved during quar quarantine. Like he hasn't left his house in, m in four months, maybe twice, wants to walk around the block and wants to take a drive. And twice in four months, and his wife commented to me, she, Susan said to me, she's like, I can't believe how much, how well you've worked with Joel and, and how much he's improved, 84 years of age. And she's like, his legs are rock hard now because we've, we've been doing so many things to help him improve his balance, his strength, his stability. So we know it can be done online, even though it's not the same as being in a person, but he is better today than he was when I was seeing him live, you know, twice a week. He's doing better now virtually online three times a week seeing me than he was when I was seeing him one-on-one -on -one in a live training environment. So it can be done. And that's the beauty of the integrative movement system and the process I've been sharing with, here with you through Facebook Lives, through our videos. And it's basically a strategic three-step process. I'm going to share with, with you the last step here in this video about hamstring strengthening. But the strengthening component is actually the third component because the first component or the first phase of the integrated movement system is the assessment process. And this is where you take your client through an assessment, whether you're doing it virtually or in person, to determine your client's suboptimal or non-optimal posture and movement habits. These are the reasons why your clients are experiencing chronic tightness, discomfort, and or inability to perform at the levels they need to and or want to. Because that then leads you into phase two of the integrative movement system, the integrative movement system corrective exercise strategy. And this is where you use your corrective exercises to help create and set up more optimal posture and movement habits. And this is where you really, where you really start to create these motor control changes or these brain body connection changes. And that's where a lot of these things happen and, and clients start to say, whoa, I feel different. I don't know what you're doing with this breathing thing, with this alignment thing, but I feel different. I feel better. I notice better range of motion, better control, better awareness of my body. But then it's also important to go into phase three, and that's the functional movement patterns where you integrate those more optimal habits into the functional movement patterns. So squatting, lunging, bending, rotating, pushing, pulling, gait, balance, and carry. The patterns your clients have to do to perform and improve and accomplish their health and fitness goals. So 
one of the topics for today I wanted to cover is strengthening of the hamstrings because that would come in phase three after you've already set up those more optimal and efficient posture and movement habits. So it also ties into a question I got recently about hamstrings and how do you work with clients that when they're doing like bridges and hip thruster type patterns, it looks like they're just their abdomen. And we see that all the time with our clients. So let me show you what, what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so what happens with, for a lot of our clients is when they thrust up or they lift up out of the bridge position, they're using a very quad dominant pattern. Two reasons for this. Number one is they have very short tibias and very big glute mass. So they don't have a lot of range of motion to go up. So what do they do instead of going up is they go this way. They start pushing themselves back this way. And this is, this is where you'll, you'll see them move their feet as soon as they go. You'll see their head going that direction. So we want to avoid doing that with our clients. So what we want to do is actually elevate our client's feet. So their feet are elevated, which gives them more range of motion. For many of our older clients, we'll also have to support some of their head and neck so that they have better alignment of their head and neck as well as their thracal pelvic cylinder, the rib cage over top of their pelvis. So what we have our clients do is basically set up with their head and neck aligned, rib cage aligned to their pelvis, pelvis in their best, most neutral position. So for me, I've got a little bit of a lordosis. I'm in slight anterior pelvic tilt. So that's my most neutral position. So now I'm well aligned. Then my feet will go up on the steps. So that way I have more range of motion to work with. From here, thumbs go on the lower rib cage, fingers go on the ASISs because I want to maintain alignment and control of that thoracal pelvic cylinder. So I'm creating just a pure bridging and hinging around my hips, which is why we call this the hip hinge bridge. So we lift up until my weight is my le um, level between my thoracal pelvic cylinder and my legs. My weight is down towards my feet and you do not see my head going back that direction. And then I'll hinge to come back down. I'll breathe in and then breathe out. <sighs> breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> the whole time maintaining alignment and control of the thoracal pelvic cylinder. Now, what about those clients that when they come up, you watch, watch my abdomen here, they'll do this. <sighs> and they'll distend out, Whew. and they'll distend out, especially when they're doing hip thrusters and weighted type bridge exercises. Well, that's not a great strategy. That is a strategy that will actually lead to and perpetuate abdominal hernias, as well as hip problems, as well as low back problems, and even neck and shoulder problems. So that's why when we breathe, we've already taught our client three-dimensional breathing. These clients are just bearing down. They're doing a Valsalva's maneuver to stabilize themselves during this pattern. So what we want to do is maintain this alignment. So breathing in, you'll see no change of my thoracal pelvic cylinder and no distension of my abdomen. And then breathe out as you go back down. Breathe in, weight is down towards my feet and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. To make this pattern more challenging, now we come again, align, set up that rib cage over top of the pelvis, come up, and now we can just do a marching bridge, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, or in, and then out, and then coming back down to the starting position. So great way to start teaching the client how to maintain rotary control of single leg support, which is why the hip hinge bridge pattern is such a great pattern to start to progress your clients once they've earned the right to get there. Now, finally, we can go to single leg bridge. And again, we want to set up the exact same way. Align the head and neck, align the thoracal pelvic cylinder. Come up, one leg comes up, maintain, eccentric load, and then lift. Eccentric load, and then lift. Maintaining alignment and control of the thoracal pelvic cylinder, avoiding over contraction, over extension, maintaining nice control. There's no distension of the abdominal wall. If you look at my abdominal wall, it maintains the same thickness dimension, relatively speaking, throughout the exercise. Lots of hamstring work, lots of glute work, lots of rotary control. So great pattern to, and progression to work with your clients so that they develop the competence to successfully and safely work their glutes, get stronger, and even more stable. And this is ultimately how you become that go-to specialist for your current clients and as well as help your clients or attract more clients that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped explain how to use progressions, especially to work and strengthen your clients to develop higher level stability and control because we do need to get our clients stronger 
What we don't want to do is develop that strength on a suboptimal or non-optimal strategy, which is what's happening for a lot of our clients, which is why they don't actually improve a lot of the time, or why they don't sustain their improvements, or why pain ultimately, or you know, these postural movement habits, these suboptimal habits come back and cause them to not be able to, to progress forward. And if you use that strategic process, the integrated movement system process, assess, then address, and then progress your client, use a proper progressions, the appropriate progressions for your client, help them earn the right to get to those high, higher level progressions. That's ultimately how you become that specialist for your current clients. And then, like I said, attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. And if you're looking for more information, check out Ideal World Virtual Conference. I'll be presenting this entire approach around the hip and shoulder based upon the integrative movement system. I'll show you how to assess your clients in the virtual world. Obviously, this works if you're one-on-one -on -one as well or small groups, this works as well. I'll show you how to easily assess your clients, how to easily and use the most effective corrective exercises to improve posture and movement habits in your client regardless of their age. Same strategy I use with Joel, same strategy I use with Kathy to improve two years of chronic shoulder problems. And again, it's not because I have some special exercises, it's because I know how to assess, I know how to use corrective exercises and how to progress a client strategically. We had to peel her back from some of her, some of her exercises so that we could finally progress her to where she is now where she's almost pain free and her range of motion went from like 90 degrees, maybe 100 degrees of shoulder flexion to now she's almost up to 160 degrees of shoulder flexion with no pain. And that's doing this all virtually. I know it could have gone quicker if I was one on one with her, but I did it virtually because of quarantine and because she lives out on the East Coast. But again, I know these strategies work and I know I can teach them to you and help you become that specialist as well. So I'm going to put the link next to this video wherever you're watching this. So that way, use my code. You save $20 off your enrollment fee. I look forward to seeing you this weekend and keep doing what you're doing because like, like I said, there's never been a better time and a more important time and your clients have never needed a leader like you to help them uplift their lives, empower their lives, to be that positive role model. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for all you do for your clients. Thank you for what you do for our community. And thank you for allowing me to be part of your community as well. Make it a great day. This is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education.